Welcome back for another Top Notch video. This week we're going to be talking about the week of the 25th of June through the 29th of June. This is a channel about TSP, stocks, IRA. If you do any of those things, if you're in the market, this channel is for you. We talk about some of these funds for TSP folks, the CSI and F fund. If you are in IRAs, uh, the IVV, VXF, EFA, and AGG ETFs. These follow the major indices. So we got the C fund, IVV, which is S&P 500, S fund, VXF, Dow Jones, I fund, EFA, which is international markets, and AGG, which is bonds. To our weekly funds, so what we had, IRA folks, just bear with me as I work with the TSP folks. As you can see, we moved in our funds back, uh, was it two weeks ago, into the G fund, and that ended up being a very, very good decision for this channel. This week we had um, negative returns for most of our equity funds. As you can see here, we did have a positive return for the F fund, and we did have a little bit of return for our money in the G fund. But mostly what we were trying to do and avoid is this big uh, co little correction here. Usually a correction is 2 to 3%, very normal pullback. So we saw that with our S and C funds. So it's very, very good. Um, might be a very good to jump back into those funds next week just so we can capture that gain. What we're trying to do is mitigate damage to our portfolio and by saving ourselves a 2% loss for the year can start to add up slowly over time. There's a quote later on in the video which I'm going to show you guys of why this is so important. So to give you an idea, let me pull up um, what we have made for the year. I'll try to minimize this down so you guys can see it. So this is the top notches channel and what we've actually made for the year. Here's our yearly return for every single month. We did pretty well for the month of June and for this quarter actually. We ended up gaining close to 7% just for this quarter alone, which is an excellent quarter for our channel. We are currently sitting at 6.66% for the year. Now that is a gross fund overall for I'm sorry, that's that is my TS what is TSP is telling me. Without the fees, we are sitting a total of 7.6%. One six for the year, but for what TSP is telling me, are we beating markets on every single level here, folks? So as you can see for the year for TSP, we're sitting at uh, almost a percent and a half here for our G fund. F funds down a whole percent and a half, two percent, two and a half percent for the C fund, six percent for the S fund, and negative two point almost five percent for the I fund. We are kicking butt, guys. We are doing better than every single fund in the TSP, and we are officially, as of this week, beating markets for uh, one half one half into the year. We are um, beating those markets. Now, that could change, but for now, we are doing very well, very, very well. It's uh, not easy to beat markets, so that, that's a great sign. Um, for those of you that are in life cycle funds, to just give you something in perspective, uh, because you're so diversified in all five funds, the... G fund is now very close to beating out almost all the life cycle funds, and that's that's not good, guys. That's uh, underperformance. So just keep that in mind with uh, the G fund and looking at your life cycle funds. I would definitely try to find the funds that are doing the best and be in those funds for the year, or just watch this channel and you can see uh, make your same allocations and do just as uh, just as well. So that's very good. I'm I'm hoping to maybe jump back into the S fund probably next week just because we don't want the S fund to be above us. We want to stay ahead of the markets and this is a very good place to stay to continue to stay ahead of the markets. But we'll look into our charts and we'll go from there. So the first chart we're going to look at back with uh, TSP and IRA folks, as you can see we don't typically go over the life cycle funds. We use the G fund for defensive or when we are trying to guard capital, which we are doing this past week. So we're going to move into the C fund for our uh, more specific analysis. So we have that C fund or ETF IVV. This is the S&P 500. And from our broad analysis, it kind of shows the same picture. So this is IVV or the C fund. What we have here is a very good trend line here. Um, this is probably one of the reasons why I'm thinking about getting back into the fund for this week. I don't know if it will violate this trend line or not. We're seeing some very interesting things between the moving averages and our trend lines. Now, the thing that is concerning is we're seeing that head and shoulder look like I mentioned before on our broad charts. Here's the left shoulder, the head, and we can see this rise up to about 275 and then shoot back down to maybe even down to 260 and hit that lower low 
which we hit in February. I wouldn't like that to happen, but that is a possibility. So we just have to keep that thing, we just have to keep that in mind as we're moving forward with IVV. And I think the best way to play this is since we're at this trend line here and where we're at with our markets is probably to follow the two day charts, not the weekly charts, but the two day charts on our chart uh, tracker. So moving on, let's look at it from our chart perspective. And let me pull that up for you right here. From a chart perspective on our weekly chart, we did have our first, second, I'm sorry, second down week on our energy, okay? We are getting very, very close to the line. But this is where we have to decide of how we're gonna make our money. So we, we avoided this right here. We ended last week somewhere in here. So we avoided all of this. So now we gotta decide of when do we get back into this market. We made a good decision to get out, but we have we have to decide when to get back in. That's very, very important. Uh, with this energy coming down, it's not a positive thing, but I think a good time to re-enter, just because we, we wouldn't t typically catch it with a weekly chart, is we look at our two-day charts. So on a two-day chart, we do not have a positive bar yet. We're not even coming out of um, a negative, a very negative period. So I think what we're gonna do is we're going to, as a strategy, is we're gonna wait until we start to see these bars come to back back up, even with the blue line below the red line, and try to capture some of that 2% gain that the markets lost that we did not lose, okay? So right now, we are gonna stay out of IVV until we see this chart improve. On a four hour chart, once we start looking at a two day chart for making decisions, we can start looking at our four hour chart. It is on its way out, um, so we are seeing that. But even the four hour chart, the blue line has not crossed over the red line. So I just would not be interested in getting involved with this fund until we see some more positive things on either our four hour or our two day chart. Moving on, let's move to VXF or the S fund, Dow Jones. So with this fund here, and this is a great example of sometimes with a head and shoulders that doesn't work out. So. We're looking at the head, and that just goes to show you that markets can do everything. That's why we pay so close attention to our charts, okay? So here's a great example of a head and shoulders. We have a left shoulder here, head here, and a right shoulder here. And instead of that breaking down and continuing to go lower, that just skyrocketed up and went the opposite direction for those two months. And very good, very, very good gains for those two months. And we were a part of those gains. We saw this back in May. And because of what our charts told us, we made the right decision, stayed in equity funds, and made that money. Okay, so we're in the same situation with our S fund or VXF. We got out somewhere right around here, and we're around a very critical line here, a major top line here. What was once resistance, or which was once uh, resistance here for this chart to continue up, may now act as resistance. We're going to have to watch our two-day chart, not our weekly chart, because that's not going to tell us anything. Um, from a short-term perspective, we're trying to get back in the market. So we need a little short, shorter decision time frame for our chart. So that's why we're going to move to that two-day chart. And we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't see a head and shoulder picture with this anymore. It looks good um, to get back in. So we might end up doing that early next week. But we'll have to wait and see with charts. As always, I'll put a comment below if we make any moves with our TSP from a technical analysis on VXF on a weekly chart, we had our first down week, okay? Big sign for the market. The last time we had a, a big down week on our first one was back here in February. And we didn't read that correctly and we ended up getting into the market this week and then we took a major drop. So we're gonna be cautious. N the markets never do exactly the same thing and they're always so uh, we want to be a little more cautious. We don't want to end up in something like where we did well here and then we put everything back in here and we ended up dropping a significant amount. So we're going to be cautious. We're going to probably look at Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday as uh, look at those that two-day chart again and then make our decision from there. On a two-day chart perspective, we still don't have anything that we're interested in. A lot of red here, negative price action. Downward bars here, big downward for our DO uh, oscillator. If we go from negative 2.5 to negative 5.7, okay, so that is a big down, big big down. We're gonna wait until this comes back. I think until it, uh, it's coming out of the red, and then we're going to try and hit that up so we can make some of that some of that market gain back. I don't know how much we will, um, but that is we're going off the probability that. 
markets will do better and hopefully we can capture that gain and stay above all funds for the year because beating the markets for the year is um, very it's it's something that's very hard to do and we would like to do that on this channel so that is on a once I said uh, we look at a two-day perspective we're gonna look at a four-hour perspective same thing with uh, the ad S&P 500 it looks like it's trying to make its way out but the blue line is still below the red line here so moving on let's look at our international markets next that's the ETF EFA or the iFun what happened with iFun we had some major gaps down here guys so this is a this is why everyone calls out heads and shoulders because it's a typical pattern in the markets before the, either the markets break down and that's exactly what he, we have a very classic example of that we have our left shoulder here our head here and our right shoulder here and after that right shoulder formed we had significant breakdown it's even below our trend line here we're below all our moving averages um, not looking good guys I would uh, not be interested in this fund at this time it's just not somewhere to have your money and we'll look at it from a technical perspective on our charts so on our charts with EFA from a weekly perspective we are um, moving into that negative energy significantly we're seeing these red bars start to pick up as you can see price actions picking up we are outside the Bollinger Bands so that might be positive for next week just to get back in but we can't predict that that's uh, based off of maybe some probability does not look good on a weekly perspective on a two-day perspective this is what we want to see with our C and S fund that's when we'd probably get back in but just because of where we're at with this fund I I'm just not I am much more critical about this fund I I really thought maybe this would be a good time to enter in the market we did not we wanted to wait and see have that blue line maybe come pop over that red line never did never got in the fund and it ended up because of that head and shoulders formation and it ended up losing quite a bit uh, for the year we stayed in a trading range of like 68 69 70 for and 71 for a very long time and now we're starting to move below that for a new lower low so um, even though we have this we're starting to come out of the markets or out of its negative energy not going to be putting money there just yet. We need to see some more positive signs with that. And last of all, let's go over AGG. So with AGG, ever since we've been in the month of June, uh, for the most part, it's continued to rise, which has been a good thing. It's been positive on our charts, but again, we are below some of these big moving averages, and that just is a uh, caution for concern for us um, looking at it from a market perspective. I would say this fund is going to be gaining uh, for a, a little while, but not as good as equity. So if you could choose between, and I mentioned this before, if you could choose between something that's performing just mediocre versus something that's performing well, what would you rather be in? But uh, from a chart perspective with AGG, like I said, we have some positives. We are in the positive, and that's typically a time when we would get in the markets. But the reason we haven't is ever since it's been positive, as you can see this straight line here it just we haven't seen price react to that positive chart on the bottom and when price doesn't react that's a sign for caution so we've stayed out of AGG instead of we put our money in the G fund to safeguard our capital and so far that's been working out okay for us so that is all our indices for this week we had the uh, I fund we had uh, the S fund C fund and a um, and the F fund we also covered the G fund a little bit so let's move over what we have overall. Um, and for you Roth IRA folks, that's IVV, VXF, EFA, and AGG. Now, looking at it from a chart perspective, like I said, two weeks ago we moved our money into that G fund, and that did save us close to 2% on our markets when you were looking at it. We had a majority in the S fund, so we saved close to 2% here, 1% here. We did very, very well but now we have to decide when do we get back in when is that time to get back in that's very very important uh, when to decide we are going to continue to keep our new as you guys know it's the end of the month and the end of the quarter any new allocations are going to go to that S fund since we're already down so when we get paid in the next couple days here that will go directly to the S fund or VXF that's where our allocations are currently going and probably Based off what markets do Monday and Tuesday, we're probably going to make a move from that G fund into the S fund very, very shortly. So please, please, please make sure you guys are paying attention to these videos. 
and we can go from there. One of my subscribers made a very good point of to have something to notify you guys, just not on the videos. So what we did here on Top Notch to cater to the subscribers, because we're always trying to uh, make this channel better, it was some very good feedback that I got. We ended up making a, a Facebook page for Top Notch. So we will post any new allocations that we do on this Facebook page. If you click like and follow, you can follow our moves. Uh, you can find us at Top Notch or it's at Top Notch times four underscore. And that just happens to bring me into my next point. We also made a Twitter account for Top Notch where we will post our moves as well. And I will post uh, the TSP share prices on here. And of course it's Top Notch and there's four underscores. So just think times four underscores or top notch and four underscores and you should be able to find us. That way um, when we do allocation changes they're much easier to find. I'll post them on my YouTube channel, I'll post them in my Facebook page, and I'll post them on my Twitter account. And so that way you guys will be able to keep up with those moves. The only other thing I want to go over for this week is um, some analysis and one of these analysis from one of our Facebook groups we're a part of. And it's just some really really good information in regards to what is going on with markets because when you get out of a market that's really important but it's also really dangerous because you still have to get back into that market you don't want to lose your advantage right now on our channel we're at an advantage but we don't want to lose that advantage so this is somebody else that also had an advantage um, and I'm, I'm gonna make sure I don't misquote him so this is a uh, Scott Zane's quote and he's from the thrift savings plan TSP Facebook group and he said some really interesting things this week. So basically, he made a swing trade, and he was in that swing trade from July 7th till today, which was, I think it was kind of later in the month. And he said it's not a huge advantage when you only knock off like 1% or 2% of the market, which we did, uh, which is back here, 1% or 2% in that market. But it's, it's a big deal when you do it a couple times a year. Now, if you were to do that, let's say, three times a year, like he suggests here, you would knock off close to 6% or 3% in your markets and you would be ahead of those markets by 3 or 6%. So that can really start to add up, like he said, and it can be a strong outperformance for those markets. Now, he did make a little bit in the G fund or treasuries why he was in those for the most part, and he did um, make some advantage based off of that, but th this is the point, okay? Even if prices were to fall another five or ten percent he's still ahead of those markets okay and so that's why it's you're getting in at a better price than when you exited at and so it's just mitigating damage off your portfolio so instead of losing and a buy and hold strategy is very good but these little swing trades really do help if you can if you can do them correctly that's the thing and most of the people that they can get out at the right time or they can get in at the right time but you have to get in and out out and in at the at the right time so it makes it very, very hard to do that. Um, he did that and he, he was very successful. The problem what people have is they, they end up getting very greedy and they get out and they continue to wait for those markets to go down and then sometimes they don't go down. They continue to rise and rise and rise and then they end up losing their positions and even says here, buy and hold investors, please stay firmly in your stock positions because this is a different strategy. But I want you guys to kind of see that I'm not the only one that um, thinks this is a good thing to do and people do do this and they do end up doing very well now we are only one half of the equation still we are still out but we're hoping to get back in either Monday or Tuesday hopefully we have a down day Monday or Tuesday and we can get back into those markets at a better price if we don't we'll take whatever we get on Monday and Tuesday and get probably get back in around that time based off the two-day charts um, for what we have for VXF or the S fund and IVV or the C fund. Okay, so we're just waiting for these charts to give us a little favorable look like that one, like right here, and for VXF right here. Just because when we did that last time in February, we decided not to wait, and then we ended up taking a good eight percent dip or a good three percent dip on our on our charts. As you can see here, we would have lost that three point six eight percent if we would have just waited a little bit longer. I think we missed this jump by maybe two days. If we would have had that jump by two days, we would have ended up probably not taking many much loss at all, not, less than a percent for sure. So we're just being a little bit more cautious with this pullback. Um, that could come to bite us in the butt, or it could work to our our benefit. Um, as always with markets, you can't, no one can ever predict them. You can just make your decisions, 
based off probabilities and hope that you do well. We made a very good decision off probability and um, now we just need to make a, uh, a good decision based off probability to, build, probability to get back in those markets. So that is pretty much everything I have for this week, guys. Um, go ahead and like, subscribe, or share this video. I really, really do appreciate uh, your guys' support. Please visit our Facebook page here, uh, like and follow that, or our Twitter page and start following us. You can It's beneficial because we'll post share prices and you can see the moves that we make. I really do appreciate it. My my question for you guys is, what do you think those the S&P 500 is going to do? Do you think it's going to uh, form that head and shoulders and drop, or is it going to continue to rise? I really would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. And that's another top-notch video. We'll see you guys next time.